dialogue between Savitri and Yama. With Savitri's commendable utterances, Yama is getting pleased and is granting her several boons. Satyavan's coming back to life and after some talk amongst them, they are setting forth towards the ashram. Markandeya said, Then he, lustrous in strength and helped by his wife, collected a basket full of fruits and began chopping the firewood. But while hewing the branches, he started sweating profusely and, as a result of that hard labor, suffering a severe headache. Distressed as he was, he went closer to his loving wife and in that affliction told her. Satyavan said, There is a cleaving headache that has come to me due to this hard work. And, O oh Savitri, all my limbs are in agony and there is a burning sensation in my heart. I find myself gravely indisposed. O oh, one of few words, it appears to me as though sharp spikes are being driven through my head. I wish to lie down. O oh, blessed and auspicious, as I have no strength to remain standing. Markandeya said, Savitri, finding him so, immediately went closer to her husband and sat on the ground and took his head in her lap. Remembering what Narad had said, that devout woman, observer of the ascetic practices, began reckoning the day, the time, even the hour and the moment. With a short, within a short while, she saw present there a bright person in red attire with a tiara on his head. Handsome and brilliant he looked, as though the sun god himself had appeared there. His body, dark in hue, was lustrous, and his eyes were blood red, and he had a nose in his hand which inspired great fright. Standing close behind Satyavan, he was steadfastly gazing at him. She, noticing him there, laid aside her husband's head on the ground and stood up with folded hands and, trembling in her heart, spoke in an anxious, longing voice to him. Savitri said, I take you to be some noble god as you have a form other than the human. If it pleases you, pray tell me who you are and what you propose to do. O oh God, Yama said, O oh Savitri, as you are devoted to your husband and as you practice ascesis, I can converse with you. Know me, O oh virtuous lady, to be Yama. Your husband Satyavan, earthborn as he is, his life is over, and I have come to bind him forcibly and take him away with me. Yes, this is what I propose to do. Savitri said, O Lord, what I have heard is that you send your ministers when human beings are concerned. And how is it then that you have come here yourself in person, O Master? Markandeya said, When asked in this manner, the King Father Lord duly began narrating everything, all in a sequence. For her satisfaction and happiness as he is conjoined in the dharma and has beautiful features and is an ocean of noble qualities it is not in proprietor, propriety that he be taken by ministers for this reason i have come myself in person then yama pulled out with force satyavan's soul the being no bigger than thumb who is fettered by his body and subject to it. With the departure of the life breath, his respiration ceased, his body, bereft of all lustre, remained immobile and was not pleasing to look at. Yama then tied it up and started moving towards the south, and Savitri, afflicted by agony, went behind Yama, following in his steps. The great lady, 
devoted to her husband, could do this, having obtained Siddhi, the fulfillment of the vow. Yama said, Savitri, turn back and attain to the funeral rites of the dead. You have now paid the debt to your husband and are free of it. As far you could go with him, you have come. Savitri said, Wheresoever is taken my husband, Savitri said, Wheresoever is taken my husband, or wheresoever he goes of his own, there must I follow him. That is the eternal dharma, the conduct of righteousness. By austerity, devotion to the perceptors, love for the husband, observance of the holy vow, and by your noble grace, there is nothing that my going can arrest. Knowers of the science of reality proclaim that by taking seven steps with a person, a friendly relationship is established with him. Honoring our friendly friendship in that respect, I shall tell you something to which I request you to listen. Those who are not self-possessed, even though they may stay in a forest, they cannot practice dharma or go by the preceptors or undertake difficult austerities. The wise who know discrimination hold happiness to lie in the dharma alone. Therefore do the sages give to dharma such preeminence. Following one's own dharma approved by those who are established in the truth, one knows the path which takes one to the goal. Therefore, one should not covet the second or the third or any other person's dharma, such as the dharma which the sages hold to be excellent. Yama said, O unblameable, return now in true accent and knowing the letters well and making the right use of the words and with the proper reasoning that you speak I am pleased with you. Ask for a boon, which I shall grant, but excluding life for the dead. Savitri said, My father-in-law has lost his kingdom and is in exile, abiding in the forest, and he is blind. I desire that the king may, by your grace, gain his sight and be mighty and glorious like the fire and the sun. Yama said, O unblameable, I grant you the boon you have asked for, and it will be so, but I see that, by walking great distance you are exhausted. Return, therefore, that you may not be more tired by this exertion. Savitri said, How can I be weary or tired when close I am to my husband? Where dwells my husband? Indeed, there I shall be. Wheresoever you will be taken, my lord. I too must go thither. O God, Sovereign, listen again to what I shall say. Company with the virtuous, even though for a short while, is a highly cherished occasion. Being in their friendship is said to be greater still. Association with holy persons is never fruitless. Therefore, one should always be close to the truthful virtuous. Yama said, O fair young lady, what you have said is most salutary for all, and is very agreeable to my mind, and is to be hailed greatly in the increase of intelligence of the learned. Ask for yet another boon, but not that of life of Satyavan. Savitri said, My wise father-in-law has lost his kingdom, and may that come back to the king as before. He is like my preceptor, and let him never aban- abandon the dharma. This, by the second boon I ask you, of you, Yama said, Soon and without difficulty shall the king regain his lost kingdom, and never will he depart from righteousness. O princess, now what you desired I have granted to you. Return, therefore, that the journey may not weary you. Savitri said, O ordainer, great in voice, the law you uphold for the welfare of the creatures and to different worlds, 
you take them according to your wishes and that is why everywhere you are well known as Yama. But please listen to what I am going to address to you. Not to have malice and not to hurt anyone with thought or with word or with act but to give away in charity and always show kindness is indeed the dharma of the virtuous. Creatures of this world generally live a short life and are prone to spend away their strength. But the noble and the saintly are friendly and kind in your manner even to the enemy when he approaches them. Yama said, O oh, bright eminent lady, in the like way a thirsty person becomes happy on getting water. I am so much moved by your words, therefore, again, but not for the life of Satyavan, ask for another boon that you greatly desire. Savitri said, Sunless is my father, the lord of the earth, and hence grant to him the fatherhood of a hundred sons of his own, that his line may continue to grow. From you, this is the third boon I wish to get. Yama said, O noble lady, a hundred illustrious sons shall be born this way for your father to perpetuate his race. But now, O princess, your wish granted, return for quite far have you come on this path here. Savitri said, close to my husband as I am, this place is not far or remote to me, and my mind can run even faster than this. Therefore, as you proceed, those words which I have already spoken, listen to them again from me. You are the mighty son of Vivaswan, and that is why the learned call you Vivaswat. To all the creatures, you are fair, and you uphold the dharma. For that reason you are, O Lord, also known as Dharmaraj. More than himself does a man put his trust in his sages, and so everyone gives more of his love, in particular to them. Only with a good heart can the living beings find trust in one another, and hence the sages are particularly trusted by everybody. Yama said, Never have I heard such holy utterances. O well learned and bright lady, in anyone speaking to me, ask for yet another boon, the fourth, please that I am, but not the life for the deceased, and from hither return to your place. Savitri said, By your union, mine with Satyavan, let there be a hundred sons, noble and heroic indeed, well born, extending the glory of the house. This is the fourth boon that I desire. Yama said, You shall have, O woman, a hundred sons, mighty and heroic, who shall gladden your heart. But, O princess, you have come walking a long distance and therefore now return, that you may not get tired on the way back. Savitri said, Holy people ever abide in the Dharma, and do not the sages despair nor are they afflicted any time. Such a company or fellowship of the pious with the saints is never without rewards or fru fruits. Never is for them any fear from the saints. By the truth, the saints learn the sun. By ascesis, the saints uphold the earth. The past, present, and future find their refuge in the saints. O King, Noble persons in the midst of the saints have never any grief. Those endowed with nobility, honor, and serve the dharmic practices of eternal value, in that they strive for the supreme good of one another, and at each other do not look otherwise. Benedictions of the persons established in the truth go never unfulfilled, never in them the ill of selfishness, nor is there, never in them is the ill of selfishness, nor is there the wounded sense of lost pride. And because such three qualities are ever present in the saints, they are hailed as the protectors of the world. Yama said, 
or devoted and chaste lady, the more in well adorned verses, full of great significance and agreeable to perception. You speak of the noble things confirmable to the Dharma. The more does my excellent devotion for you increase. Therefore, choose yet another but an appropriate boon from me. Savitri said, O destroyer of pride, this boon which you have granted me is of a different kind than the earlier ones, and it cannot get fulfilled without pra proper matrimony. That is why again I ask for the life of Satyavan, without whom, as a husband, I am as good as dead. If I am to get such pleasure without my husband, I shall abstain from it. Even if heaven were offered to me, I would not enter it without my husband. I am not anxious to possess wealth or fortune if it is without my husband. Actually, I do not even wish to exist without my husband. You have given me the boon of a hundred sons, and you yourself are taking my husband away. For that reason, I ask again the boon of life for Satyavan, by which your words shall come true. Thank you.